So you are doing some grounding. Don't forget to bond the ground rod to the house ground rod. Uh, you're not in the house. Where are you? You're portable. You're five miles away from your house. Bond the ground rod to your utility ground. Well, I guess you get five miles of wire. Hello electronics enthusiasts and ham radio operators around the world. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. By the way, subscribers to this channel are known as Augies. O-G-G-I-E, Augie. Okay, which happens to also be a Cornish pastry, so you can pick which one you want to be. So the question today is actually a comment, comes from RDH2059 on a short 67 ground rod bonding. I think you are misunderstanding the guy stating that the house ground rod is on one side of the house and the shack is on the other side of the property. I believe they probably have a long rambler type single story house, those are real common in California too, that is narrow but very long in one direction. I have one of those houses too and my station is on the complete opposite end of the house. That means my bonding wire is going to be somewhere around 70 plus feet, probably well over 100 feet if I bury it around the perimeter of the house, which is what you want to do. You don't want that going in the house. To the main grounding rod at the other end, this definitely seems excessive. I don't know, I've been to restaurants where I think the prices are excessive, but at what point do you call something excessive? Too much. Is there really no practical range for bonding a separate grounding rod to the main house? Let's take a look at this on the whiteboard. This right here is the long Rambler style house. They're one story. And this, he might have a bedroom here or something. This is his shack and he's got a ground rod right here. Now as electricity comes in, over here where the meter is and the utility ground is here. And this would take 70 feet to do that. Okay, let's draw that in, in this purple line here. You want a wire number six or thicker, which means a lower number. You want that buried all the way over to this. Now, what you're missing in your description is that about every 15 feet you put in an extra ground rod on these. So from the side you see your wire like this and you've got a ground rod every so often. And then this whole thing is buried. Okay? Now this doesn't lay on the surface. It's supposed to be buried. The buried part helps it become kind of a kind of ground rod-ish itself and then these ground rods really ground it so if you hook into it here you're grounded if you hook into it here you're grounded the point of this is if there is an electrical spike of some kind it keeps these two ground rods at the same level okay so in the house if this voltage goes up this voltage goes up and in the house the wiring can keep things at the same. The idea is that you want your ham radio equipment to be bonded to the same ground that the house is so that if there's a change in voltage due to a nearby lightning strike or a bad wind storm or something like that, then you're more protected. Now that begs the question of if there is a lightning strike, the voltage in the house wiring here can be very different from the voltage here. So. I'm still researching this, what code says you should do uh, to keep all that bonded together too. But there you go. I think that answers the question of what you can do. And the thing that was missing from what you were looking at were those intermediate ground rods. Ground rods by themselves are not dreadfully expensive. They're not cheap either. Now, if you're going to put in several ground rods, I would try to rent from Home Depot a ground rod driver. Basically, and, and you can actually buy ground rod drivers. I first learned about this from Brad Rich, who helped me put in the Step IR antenna. And he showed me one that he had that just basically bangs on the top of the thing. You put the thing on it, and it bangs, and it just drives it right into the ground, which is a lot easier than trying to hit it with a sledgehammer, because I've had ground rods try to bend on me, and stuff like that. Well, they do. So if you can get something that can drive that down, rent it from Home Depot for a few bucks a day, then you can get these ground rods in all the time. 
Now the wire, when it passes the pole, either needs to be conducted with a crimp connection, a proper ground rod bonding, or actually there's uh, little devices, incendiary devices, that you can get from an electrical supply. You put around the wire and the ground rod, you light it off, and it's got thermite in there. Don't get this real near the house. And it will burn and actually melt some copper powder in there and weld that thing together. Or you can use TIG welding and do copper weld to copper weld, whatever is easiest for you. You could also do what I did when I had the, the box that houses all my lightning arresters, is right just the other side of that wall. I had an electrician put it in because I didn't really know how to run conduit from that inside the house. It was just easier to let the electrician do it. And you can have an electrician put in that wire for you if you want the whole thing, can do the whole thing. You can get two or three estimates of the price and, and so on. And the electrician will be in and out of there in an hour, whereas this could take you several days as you're trying to figure it out. And the thing will be done to code and all that kind of stuff like that. I'd like to introduce you to a little something we're doing for fundraising here, which is if you go to patreon.com slash ke0og, you can sign up for a free membership or a paid membership, which can be at the $2 a month, $5 a month, $10 a month, $20 a month. The last one is our quark level. The introductory one's the electron level. If you sign up for any of those, including the $2 one, $2 a month, $24 a year, although actually, if you pay a whole year at a time, you get a little discount. And I will send you a real $2 bill to match that $2 a month. These are legal tender in the United States. They're rare. You don't see them very much. Cash register drawers don't even have a place for them because they're so rare. But they're real. They're actual $2 bills. So we'll send one of those off to you in the mail. So make sure that when you sign up for Patreon, you include your call sign, either that or your address. And just give me your call sign. I can look it up. Thanks so much for all your support and all your questions. And I hope these answers are helpful. For people who don't have that particular question, I hope the videos are useful too. Until we next meet, 73. <music>